Alright, so this is how you properly clean out a rotary engine. stand is a NA Series 4 FC 6 port. I got it basically for free. Um, just helping a friend out getting his car on the road and stuff like that. And this is what he's giving me in exchange. And I'm just cleaning it up. There's a bunch of stuff I was using to break up all the debris on it. So that's why it's all ugly and dirty looking. But uh, it is actually a lot cleaner than it was. Anyway, uh, when I turn the motor, your compression pulse is coming out of one uh, housing, but not the other. And I'll just show you that right now. So when I spin this uh, six times 360 degrees, you only hear uh, the compression pulses coming out of this rotor. That's because all the apex seals in this uh, rotor are stuck. They are carbon locked. Okay, so normally you should be able to just go ahead and push up and you'd see the apex cell move in and out. But this one, you can actually do that. So this one still moves freely and all, uh, all three apex cells on this rudder still move freely and perfectly fine. So they're all stuck on this one. Now, what causes this is uh, babying, uh, treating it like it's a piston engine, always driving constantly at low RPMs, uh, never taking it up, driving it hard, or redlining. And uh, you know, what happens, because these motors are meant to burn oil, they build up carbon. And uh, you know the way you get that out is by beating on it, uh, redlining, redline a day, that's where that comes from. And... Uh, yeah, uh, this this is what happens when you don't beat the shit out of your rotor engine. Now, uh, some people think they're hurting their engine, and you know that that's kind of why people drive these at low RPM because they hear horror stories of, oh, if I beat on it, her they're unreliable, so I don't want to beat on it and break it and whatever. Well, this this is exactly how you break a rotor engine by not beating on it. You know, it's it's the opposite of a piston engine, so. Whatever you know about piston engines, throw that out the window. It's the opposite for a rotary engine. Just keep that in mind. But it is possible to fix this. And uh, there's a trick that's referred to as the ATF trick. And uh, when the engine's in the car, what you do is you take a spark plug from each rotor out. And uh, just, just keep in mind when you do do this, it'll destroy your spark plugs. So you know, have a new set on hand. But um, you take the spark plug out from each rotor, you put the ATF in through the uh, spark plug hole, you turn the motor by hand um, using a, let's see, a, uh, a ratchet and a 19 mil socket for the uh, front bolt thing. And then uh, you just turn it over, and then I think the total amount you want in each rotor housing is two ounces, so four ounces in total. And then you just keep spinning it and spinning it just to get even uh, coverage. Then you just let it sit for a few days. And then what that does is it uh, breaks up and loosens up the carbon. And at that point, you uh, you just start up, let it idle for a little bit. And uh, it will create a pretty big smoke show. Um, I, I guess uh, people will think that there's a brush fire or something like that. But there will be a lot of smoke because it has to burn off all that ATF and stuff like that. And uh, hey, you take it, you just take it out for a spin. Um, I think for about 10 miles, you just take it easy. And then after that, you beat the living dog shit out of the engine. And, uh, that should eat all the carbon out of the engine through the exhaust. And, uh, that's the method I'm going to use here, except not with ATF. Instead, I'm going to use Marvel Mystery Oil. Now, I was recommended to use this instead of ATF, because what ATF does to the rubber seals, like the, uh, the corner seal plugs and the oil control ring, uh, O-rings, um, ATF will swell it up and 
they're they're not gonna last as long but i guess uh the marvel mystery oil it uh doesn't do that so i'm gonna use this instead plus this is like less than half the cost of atf so yeah walmart like 388 in tax now uh from what i just described you think that i'd be putting this in my car and then uh, doing all that stuff, driving it hard and beating the dog shit out of it. But I do not want to install this engine unless it's good to go. Because once this goes in, my 12A comes out and that engine is going in my friend's car to get it on the road. So uh, if, if I can't get this to uh, wiggle loose on all three apex seals on this rotor, then it's gonna have to be torn down. I don't have to clean the rotors as good as I possibly can, um, get an O-ring kit and then seal it back up and i don't want this car to be down okay so just taking the straw dipping it into the oil put my finger over it it'll hold that and then just sticking it in there then turning it over by hand Nice and ruby in there. So there's a lot of carbon in there. So I'm gonna try and get as much coverage as I can all over the rotor so I can break up as much as I can. But uh, I, I will give this a little bit too, even though the apex seals are moving just fine. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna let it sit for a few days and see where it's at. Just check it and spin it periodically uh, over the next few days when I come home from work. Also, he's the guy that's getting my uh, 12 a Yep. Yeah. So progress on at least one sale so far. Now at this point, it is definitely possible I can install it in the car, get it running on primarily the rear rotor because it's not really gonna do well on the front rotor. It's gonna fire on one face and that's it and then misfire like hell on the other two faces. Um, but I could install it and then take it out and beat the living hell out of it. And that may be enough to break it loose and uh, it could possibly run just fine. And uh, you know, I would be all for that, but I actually do want this engine to run in my car uh, for some decent amount of time. Not a hell of a lot, a lot of amount of time because I mean, I have a killer B I want to put in and I really just want to use this as a, a test bed for some things I'm doing with the Killer Bee. But um, I, I think the right thing to do, rather than just doing a full send, which I know you guys would really love to see, and you know, I, trust me, I, I want to see that too, because I'm all about full sends. But uh, yeah, the, the right thing to do would be to pull this motor apart, uh, clean the hell out of everything, get all the sills out of the rotors and then just get all the carbon that I can off of them. And then reassemble it with a new O-ring kit. Um, I don't plan on replacing any sills or anything like that. Uh, maybe springs if I have some extra ones laying around. But anyway, uh, next clip should be uh, tearing the motor down and then inspecting and you know, seeing if this motor is even worth the time and effort and the $105 for the O-ring kit to put it back together. And uh, we'll go from there. So motor's all torn down and uh, for the most part, everything looks pretty decent. Um, let's see, when I take off the rear iron, I was inspecting it for uh, water channel breaking and stuff like that and didn't really see anything, but yeah, all the coolant cells are pretty much torn up. Um, I didn't really inspect this iron too much. God, those ports are fucking tiny, Jesus Christ. 
Yeah, not seeing any breaking here. Uh, the housing is don't look all that favorable. I saw some chatter marking on this housing. I um, haven't fully inspected them, but uh, unfortunately this iron is dead. And as you can see right there, yeah, it's, uh, it's cracked completely open. But some uh, cool things I did see was uh, on the front rotor, um, Apex sills just popped out, but they're actually three piece sills. So that means that uh, well, this looks like a Rennes to sill at first glance, but actually it's uh, three separate pieces of the uh, same sill. So you got your corner sills over there. I, I just put those over there just to you know, have a spot for them. Then you got your top piece here. Then you got the bottom piece that sits in the bottom there. And um, I guess uh, from what I was told is that these ones seal the best. They have the best heat dissipation and stuff like that. Oh, and that U-shaft is fucking beautiful. I was thinking of using my Renesis shaft over there, but yeah, I, I want to use that one. But, um, oh yeah, I didn't even look at the bearings. Uh, first glance, those look good. I'd use them again. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna have to replace this uh, front iron or get a set of uh, Turbo 2 end plates in order to uh, actually rebuild this motor. Now, since they're talking about this stuff right now, let me tell you a little bit about the water channels in rotary engines. So, let's see, only in the Series 4, uh, Series 5, uh, NA and Turbo, uh, REW Series 6, Series 7, and Series 8, and uh, JC Cosmo 13B RE and 20B REW, those are the only engines uh, in all of Mazda's rotary lineup um, through the years that had water channels located in the irons. Now in engines like the Killer B, which is a 76 to 78 RX-5 Cosmo engine, water channels are not in the irons. Instead, it's in the housings. Gosh, yeah, I shouldn't smack parts together like that. And over here, I have a housing from a, I believe this one came out of a Repu, but uh, these housings are found in a Repu and RX-4. Uh, 74 to 78, or 74 to 76. I don't know all the years for these housings. They go to housings. Yeah, right. as you can see, water channels in the housing. Now in the Renesis, Mazda switch back. As you can see, no water channels. And the reason is specifically because of this. All engines that use this style of iron are prone to uh, water channel breaking. Um, it's never been an issue in these motors and it's never been an issue in the Renesis. So technically all, all engines that uh, use this style iron are kind of unreliable pieces of shit. And they make great power, they make great torque, they're capable of water power and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that they're bad, but this style of iron is bad because it's always prone to that. Anyways, as uh, far as rebuilding this engine goes, I don't know what I'm gonna do from here. I don't know if I'm even gonna think about rebuilding it from this point. Uh, if I could find a good deal on a set of Turbo 2 end plates or REW plates or you know, some, some four port plates or whatever, then uh, I might pull the trigger on those and then go from there. But uh, as it stands now, this, well, it's just parts. And I may end up just selling them. <sighs> what do? Oh, yeah, I want to show you something. So I was just comparing stuff. And uh, here's the Killer B porting template versus a thumb port. And the reason they're called thumb ports is because your thumb can literally cover the whole port. There's that. Uh, that's uh, that's one of the things I wanted to do is just at least port down so that it gives it a little bit more oil and torque. Maybe port up a bit too. I don't really know the uh, limitations of these ports, but uh, just, just something I was thinking about. But obviously that's probably not gonna happen now. But anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Um, I really need to get moving on Killer B, so I'm probably gonna just get my ass moving on that, and uh, we'll go from there and see you in the next one.
Thank you.